Welcome to this edition of Five Questions here on KHVHradio.com, HawaiiReporter.com, and also here on the Rick Amato Radio Program. It's a delight to welcome with us uh, Mr. Rick Manning, uh, representing Americans for Limited Government. And Rick, thanks so very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Rick. Uh, basic uh, format of five questions. I'll start with the first, which is obvious. Can you briefly tell us about uh, ALG and apply that definition to what ails America the most today? Well, ALG, Americans for Limited Government, is just what it sounds like. We're uh, an advocacy group that um, seeks to limit uh, federal government in particular power um, and the ever-encroaching federal government power. Uh, threat to individual liberty across the nation, whether that be from excessive spending or from personal liberties issues that uh, that are continually cropping up from net neutrality to a whole variety of issues that deal with uh, our, our constitutional rights. And how it relates very simply is um, our nation faces a, a tremendous threat that uh, uh, because of this encroaching government power. And it's not a partisan threat. It is just a, the nature of government that always wants to grow bigger. And so we are doing everything that we can to keep let people know what's going on and how they can get involved to try to uh, to stop government from becoming so large that our country no longer re- even mm-hmm. looks like America anymore. I'm going to uh, go to question number two, and this might be an obvious one, but it is what we have today, and that is our the Obama administration. And I'd like you to give us your critique or analysis of what the situation was in America at the end of the Bush administration and then with what President Obama has been responsible for since he came into office. Well, at the end of the Bush administration, we we had reached a point where we had the banking crisis going on. Um, and the Bush administration made a decision to have a massive government intervention and a bailout of the, of the banking system, which President Obama, as a U.S. senator, supported. Um, so President Obama comes in, and he is uh, looking at a situation where a lot of money has been spent on the economy. Uh, there's been heavy government intervention. Um, but our national debt was, was relatively um, – our, our deficit was relatively under control. Um, then we had a, a stimulus package that uh, the president passed through Congress. That stimulus package was about a, a trillion dollars, the largest stimulus package in the history of the world, and it didn't work. And we spent a trillion dollars of uh, taxpayer resources without having any actual economic stimulus resulting. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, over the last three years, we've put so much spending in place, it's kind of remote control spending, that we are actually, in the two budget years that President Obama is responsible for, have spent over three and a half trillion dollars more than we've brought in. And we now face a budget deficit that is, in fact, almost impossible to fix. And it's because we've put remote control spending in place that is that really doesn't deal with the day-to-day spending of government, but programs and expanding program availability to people that has created an environment where our government is actually programmed to spend about a trillion dollars more than it brings in revenues. It's an amazing number, Rick. It is an amazing number. I mean, when you think about it, a trillion dollars is, we can't even even calibrate it in our brains, Mm -hmm. but that's a number that I, I remember just five years ago when we were talking about having a hundred billion dollar deficit and everybody being out of control and real mad about that. That would, if we got ourselves in the next five years down to only having a hundred billion dollar deficit, they'd be having parades in the street of D.C. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. Uh, thank you for that perspective, by the way. Uh, it's five questions with Rick Manning of Americans for Limited Government. Uh, Let me go to question number three, and and we're entering, of course, into the political season of election year 2012. Define for us briefly, if you could, Rick, the difference between the GOP and the Democrat Party, especially as it pertains to the type of government we'll have in America. I think this is the easy one. Um, And ALG is a nonpartisan group, and so let me be clear. Um, We would prefer that the Republicans were much more aggressive in terms of cutting the size and scope of government. Having said that, 
Uh, we saw last week uh, the Republicans, John Boehner and Paul Ryan, go meet with the president and have a real conversation about what the need to be done to bring the budget under control. And we had Paul Ryan lecture the president and basically say, listen, you need to stop characterizing the Medicare plan as being anything more than what it is, and that is an attempt to get Medicare so it doesn't bankrupt our country. So he goes in and he mm -hmm. talks about the real cost of Medicare. Nancy Pelosi and the House Democrats went in and spoke with the president the next day, and she came out and said, "We've got the Republicans want to eliminate Medicare uh, for seniors, and we're going to win the next election as a result of it." Paul Ryan's plan doesn't eliminate Medicare, and what you're looking at in the difference between the two is any change to an existing entitlement program to a big spending program that the Republicans want to do, the Democrats are going to claim that, it's a, that it is, in fact, eliminating the program. They have totally different perspectives. The Republicans are looking for smaller government and private enterprise to lead the way back with job recovery, and the Democrats believe that government is the answer to the, to the problem. And so, ultimately, you have that perspective is what the, what's the answer? Is it big government or is it private, the private sector? And, you know, well, time remains to be seen as to which is right. But from an American for Limited Government perspective, big government is not the answer. Rick Manning of uh, Americans for Limited Government joining us for this edition of Five Questions. Question number four, Rick, is that recently Moody's bond rating service came out and did an analysis and is potentially threatening to lower uh, the credit rating of the United States of America, which in my lifetime is unprecedented, but a very real possibility. What does this tell us about the financial financial viability of our nation? And if we do not make systemic changes to how we do business, what will be America's financial future? Well, it tells us we're in trouble. Um, Standard & Poor's uh, said the same thing about three weeks right. prior to that. And what they're saying is if you don't get your fiscal house in order, we're going we're gonna to change your bond rating. What that means, to put it in, in layman's terms, if you have a if your credit score goes down and you don't have a very good credit score you have to pay more money in interest to borrow money so while somebody might lend you money they're going to charge you more money to pay it back that's what this bond rating means in terms of Moody's or Standard & Poor's is that if in fact we end up having to finance our debt our trillion or 14 trillion dollar debt and have to pay a higher interest rate to finance it to get people to be able to to buy those government bonds then what we in fact will have to do is it will significantly change the amount of money we have to spend every year to finance the debt making the budget the opportunity to get out from under the debt even more difficult because quite honestly we're burning cash paying interest and you know anybody who's been in this credit card cycle knows that at some point you can't make the payment because you've, you're constantly paying just the interest on the payment, and you can never catch up. And that's where we're, where we're heading. And that's the danger of what Moody's is talking about, because effectively we're going to end up in a debt cycle that is, uh, that is impossible to get out of if we don't get our fiscal house in order now. And uh, we are talking with Rick Manning, of course, of Americans with Limited Government. Rick, thanks so very much. But I have just one last question, question number five. And that deals with the state of Hawaii. Yes. With your understanding and analysis of our condition here from a political standpoint, economic standpoint, what's your assessment of the state of Hawaii? What's your observation? The state of Hawaii is one of the most beautiful places on earth that I that I have ever visited. It's a uh, um, and uh, the unemployment rate is is better than the national average. Mm -hmm. um, but the state of Ohio, uh, of Ohio, the state of Hawaii is in is is in some degree of jeopardy as a result of some of these problems because between the Japanese yen being uh, really just decimated um, because of their economic spiral down and the uh, U.S. dollar being in trouble, um, tourism and the like to Hawaii can be significantly impacted. Um, you know, we're in this together, and every single state has different ways it's going to impact them. But Hawaii is particularly vulnerable to um, international currency issues and, um, and basic perception as to whether the United States is a good place to come. 
And so it's a, as, as we um, begin to, if we continue in this cycle where, where the United States is in trouble, Hawaii will be negatively impacted in terms of uh, uh, wor- the world as a whole. Um, Hawaii is uh, with a relatively low unemployment rate from a national perspective with home, with the values of property um, becoming really pretty stable. Hawaii, from a from a actual economic perspective, is is still doing pretty well, but uh, it is uh, it's not immune from the shocks that it will occur as the government tries is continues to spend way too much money in Washington. We uh, appreciate uh, Rick Manning from Americans for a Limited Government. Hey, Rick, uh, what's the best way to contact your organization? Um, on the web, uh, www.getliberty.org. And we appreciate you greatly. Thanks so very much for helping us out. This edition of Five Questions, I hope we can do it again. Thank you, Rick. Look forward to it. Thank you much, Rick. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.